How do you build the greatest movie theater on Earth? Actually, you most likely can't, but the Tennessee Theater did just that. Built in the middle of Hollywood's golden age, it created the most extraordinary movie palace in the South. First constructed as office space, it became a stage to remember. But for the majority of its life, it was fighting to stay alive. So let me tell you the story of the creation, death, and transformation of the Tennessee Theater. My name is Andreas. This is How to Build the World. The golden age of cinema spread across many American downtowns. Knoxville was growing quickly, and movie theaters opened across Gay Street, starting with the Staub's Opera House in 1872, and later with the Bijou Theater in 1908. There was yet a grand palace to come along and be the grandest of them all. Our story starts on the corner of Gay and Clinch Street. The first structure was a two-story log cabin in 1790. It was home of Blunt College, which later became the University of Tennessee. It was demolished for a skyscraper in 1907. Before the grandest palace was ever conceived, the original structure was a tall office building. The Knoxville Banking and Trust Company built the 10-story structure and it was the tallest building in the city. Designed by architectural firm Richards McCarthy and Balford and built by George Fuller Construction, it was made in the second Renaissance Revival architectural style. After the ironwork structure was completed, Maud the Mule, an essential member of the construction crew, was hoisted to the platform at the top of the building. For some crazy reason, that is fascinating. In 1912, the banking company went under, and a South Rail company established its ticket office in the lobby. Shortly after, they moved to another building. Clay Brown Atkin was an interesting entrepreneur. Becoming the new owner of the family company, that initially worked in the lumber and architectural industry, he expanded it into real estate, creating first-class homes and hotels. Atkin was widely known to play live classical music in his hotel lobbies, and his company helped construct the Bijou Theater on Gay Street. Atkin experienced exceptional success with the Bijou, and he realized that he wanted to go bigger. In 1917, the C.B. Atkin Realty Company purchased the tall office building and renamed it to the Burwell Building after his wife, Mary Burwell. He also bought the land behind the Burwell, reaching all the way to State Street. Soon after, he started plans for building the most fantastic movie theater in the South. I am not sure if it was Atkin or the architects, but they planned to build it as detailed and extravagant as possible. The hired architects were Graven and Mayer. They designed the theater in the Moorish Revival design, creating an unusual collage of architectural styles unique only to this theater. Construction started in 1927, and the movie theater opened its doors on October 1st, 1928. The Tennessee Theater was born at the height of the golden age of movies. Everyone was waiting for a seat at the largest movie screen in the city. The Tennessee was designed with 2,000 seats and had a state-of-the-art air conditioning system, which was unheard of at the time. Hollywood actors visited the Tennessee, and fame shined so brightly on it that no one could compete with it. During its debut, came along a lifelong companion of the Tennessee, the Wurlitzer organ. Musical pipes deeply hidden within the theater itself. Many mysteries at the Tennessee were born during this era. In 1938, workers found a large secret room under the seats. Another mystery is the tradition of keeping a single stage light on to keep the ghost company at night. The most famous feature of the theater is the extreme interior design, where everything inside the building was masterfully handcrafted. If you look hard enough, secret details can be seen everywhere. At the height of its popularity, everything was sublime. After World War II, everything changed. Cars invaded Knoxville, and television changed entertainment forever. People left downtown, and going to the movies was over. Downtown businesses died, and buildings everywhere were being demolished for parking. But the Tennessee was still showing movies. Unfortunately, it was falling apart into disrepair. The biggest problem was that the Tennessee only has one giant screen that can only show one movie at a time, which almost never allowed it to be profitable. Every other movie theater on Gay Street died, and the Tennessee was the last one standing. Ultimately, in 1977, the Tennessee closed its doors, never to show another movie again. The Tennessee was still alive in people's hearts. Local citizens and business people tried to save it. 
They did small reopenings and had movie showings. But real change happened when James Dick came to save the day. He spent $1.5 million to buy it and almost another million to restore it in 1981. In 1992, he registered the Tennessee as a historical listing and entered it in the Knoxville's 1982 World's Fair. This was just the beginning. However, Dick was investing his own money and it was not sustainable in the long run. Fortunately, in 1996, he found the right people and announced the creation of the Historic Tennessee Theater Foundation. The Tennessee was run down and needed some TLC. With the support of the city and the state of Tennessee, the Tennessee was able to get a full-fledged restoration and finally address the shallow stage, the failing interior design, and a half a century old technology. The transformation started in 2003 and it took two years. The stage was deep in 19 feet and the stage is literally cantilevered above State Street. Everything was entirely restored, from the lights to the carpets to the wall details. And the only addition to the building is the Grand Tennessee sign in the front, completely changing the Tennessee from a movie theater to an actual theater stage. A lot of cities like Knoxville don't have a theater like this anymore. Um, they were torn down, a lot of them were torn down in the 60s and 70s. So for Knoxville to have this theater not only still existing, but fully restored, fully preserved, and really active, that's, that's pretty rare. So Knoxville is very fortunate to have the theater. Entering this palace, you are transported into another era, and you get to see it how it looked like on opening day in 1928. There is a reason why the Tennessee Theater is considered the state of Tennessee's theater, and it is also called Knoxville's Grand Entertainment Palace. The Tennessee will always shine brightly to give a show to remember, and you truly cannot find a theater like this anywhere else in the world. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please like and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Thank you for supporting this channel, and I really hope to make more videos like these because I'm just having so much fun just going out to record, asking strangers on the internet to say, hey, can I actually go check out your building? But you know what? Some say yes, some say no, but I'm always excited to show the world and how it was built, show the history, and just show how it was built. So thank you so much for watching. <laughs>